So do you think that your USB cables are created equally? What if I told you they look identical? They look just like each other. I mean, in my hand, I have one black, one blue. But that's the only thing different. Everything else, everything else is the same. But what's so different about it? So in this video, I'm going to be going over the difference between USB-C cables. But I also have a cable review as well in here. If you look down in the little bar, everything is time stamped and I have all the time codes down in the description. So here are some symbols and information. So we have USB 3.2, which is five gigabit, which normally has SS5. Then you get SS10, which is 3.2, 10 gigabit, SS20, 20 gigabit. Then you got SS and then you have the D on it, which means display port. This is actually a D and a P. USB 3 has display port. Same thing with USB 4, which is 20 gigabit. Then you move over to USB 4, which is 20 gigabit, and it will say 20 and have this symbol here, and then of course 40 with this symbol here. So this is just a little diagram of some of the newer USBs that we have. We still have the old USBs, which is this style right here, USB A and B right here, uh, which can't even get close to these numbers at all. I think one gig might have been the top off. I'm not quite 100% for sure for that one. I just know that they were just in the megabit, even if it claimed that it did a gigabit, it wasn't even nowhere near what USB-C can do. That's why everything is going to USB-C. Not only data runs through these cables, you also got wattage, which is energy current. So as the diagram right here shows, so we got 2.5 watts for USB-2 uh, and USB-3. These are both your old standards. That is this one right here, not this one right here. So this one right here, you could have got up to 4.5 watts out of this. I believe you could got a little bit more. I think the highest that we got for wattage was I think five to 10 watts was the total we can get from the old standard right here. So here's the old standards, like I was showing just a second ago. So 7.5 was the highest. So we could get up to 15 though, once we went to USB-C. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a shout out to Fiddy. Fiddy did send me a USB-C Thunderbolt 5 cable. This here is actually capable of doing 80 gigabits plus Thunderbolt, plus some more stuff, which we're gonna get into here in just a minute. And we're gonna see how good this cable is compared to an old school USB-C cable. So as we go through the timeline for the USB-Cs, you had the 2.0, 3.2, 3.210. So you got different ones. And then we came out with Thunderbolt. They have Thunderbolt 1, 2, 3, 4, and now coming out for future proofing Thunderbolt 5. So Thunderbolt 4 is what a lot of devices like your Apple products will support today. So here are some other differences between the Thunderbolt, the USB-Cs and the Thunderbolt. So USB 3 with DisplayPort, you can get 10 gigabits of data transfer through it right here, one display and 4.5 watts. So anything that was capable of doing 4.5 watts for charging, say your Samsung phone or an old Apple phone, probably like the iPhone 8 or 9, was using this type of cable right here. Then we move up to USB 4, which went up to 7.5, but it also went up to 20 gigabit transfer, still only one display. So then we go up to Thunderbolt 3. Thunderbolt 3 jumps up a big step. We get 20 gigs, it doubles itself, but now we can also add in a, a 4K display. But again, remember, look at your PC minimum requirements as well. So you had to make sure that you had a PCI Express on your motherboard in order to be able to get this right here. Even though it's running through the USB-C, it pulls the bandwidth from that PCI Express. So then we also jump up to 15 watts. Well, then we jump up to the Thunderbolt 4. Again, we are still at 40 gigabits, but this one allows you to run two 4K monitors simultaneously. And again, it is still at 15 watts. Say you want to know what your PC or laptop has. That's what I'm going to show real quick. So again, you got to pay attention to the icons and what they say on the side of your laptop. So these are your icons and what they mean. So if it's just a regular USB 2.0 USB-C, which is 480 megabit speeds, this is what they will look like. If it's USB 3.0, which is 3.1 Gen 1, you get super speeds at five gigabits. And these are what your icons will look like as well as USB 3.1 Gen 2, which you get 10 gigabits of transfer. It'll say 10 right next to it. And remember the other diagram I also showed as well. So again, these are what you're looking for right here on your devices. If you're going to buy a laptop, you go ahead and look at the specs that it has and look at the ports, as I'm showing right here on this invoice. 
This one right here is telling me I have two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C with display and power delivery. So now don't go run out and buy you a cable just yet because see some cables will say that they are 240 watts. They don't have the data bandwidth as well as a 240 watts. So they might just be a charged cable. You gotta make sure that you're looking and that's one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people doing is they go out and they buy cables because it said 140 watts or 240 watts. So for me, I have an extra cable for my laptop. It's a USB-C laptop that charges through USB-C. I don't want data to go in between that. I want that strictly as a charger, but I need at least 65 watts of power in order to charge that laptop. So that's what I ordered was a 100 watt cable because the power delivery on my laptop will stop that excess power. But if I ever need a little bit extra power on my, you know, for something else, I have it there. Not only that, I have a capture card. And in order to get my 4K image that you're seeing me through right now, I can't just have a 240 watt USB-C cable without having to have that video transmission as well coming through, which are going to be your Thunderbolt ports. So if you have a laptop or a monitor that has USB on it and it has that Thunderbolt port, you can connect that directly into your PC. So say I'm a monitor, for instance, you can go from the monitor to the PC and then use the iGPU on the motherboard to actually get your images on it. In turn, you can watch videos and, and do everything else just like you would a regular GPU. But then you can also find some graphics cards like Gigabit and Asus. They actually have a USB-C port on the back. And a lot of people wanted to know why. Because if you have a capable monitor of doing, say, 4K 144 frames, and then your video card has that USB-C, you can plug that into it if you have the correct cable and get it without running through an HDMI or display port. So saying that, you need to make sure that this symbol right here, the D and the P right here for display port for your USB-C is on your device that you're trying to connect and to put that image onto. And for the power delivery, you need to make sure that you have the correct cable for it. And as you see, for the 40 gigabit Thunderbolt 4, you can run two 4K monitors or one 8K. The, the Thunderbolt 3, 40 gigabit, two 4K, or one 5K. The USB 4, 20 slash 40, which we know that you're going to get it roughly 20 out of it because you don't ever get your advertised speed. You can run two 4K or one 8K. And then, of course, USB-C 3.2, you can only run one 4K monitor. So now let's look at the Thunderbolt 5 the next generation Thunderbolt cable. Bi-directional 80 gigabits, which means it can transfer one way and the other way. So think of a highway, for instance. When you're driving down the highway, you see people going north and south. When you're driving one way, you got cars coming on the other way. It's not just one direction. So that's how this works. So if you have four lanes one side, you have four lanes the other side. So it's bi-directional. So you get 80 gigabits. So think of that as 80 lanes of a highway, one way, 80 lanes on a highway, the other way. 120 gigabit bandwidth boost. So you can get boost up to 120 gigabit. That's just insane. You can run multiple 8K displays. You can run one 4K at 540 hertz refresh rate. As of right now, we only have 4K 240 hertz refresh rate. And then you get 240 power delivery, 240 watts. You can charge something with 240 watts through this cable. Insane. Then we have Thunderbolt 3 and 4 compatibility. That means you can use this Thunderbolt on this Thunderbolt cable on a Thunderbolt 3 port or a Thunder 4. So now that I told you the differences between these cables, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an old cable right here I got this one right here, and then I have my new one by Fiddy. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I have an NVMe in an external drive right here. So it's a 500 gig Western Digital SN750 is what's in here. So it is a Gen 4 PCI Express uh, NVMe drive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna go to Crystal Disk Mark, and I'm gonna do a quick bench. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with um, the new Fiddy. Thunderbolt 5 cable. And then I have a phone that I use for my overhead view that I have some files. I want to see how fast them files can transfer over to the phone for real world use. So the first one I have is 3.1 Gen 1, which is the 5 gigabit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here and uh, I got quite a few different pictures in here. So how much space do I have? 79 left. So I got a video right here that I've already created 2.53 gigs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up this 
and I'm going to transfer it over to this drive. So right now it is transferring at 40 gigabits or 40 megabits per second. Okay, not bad. It took about a minute to do. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it back onto the PC. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go ahead and drop it in here. Go ahead and hit replace. And then I have to slow down the footage to see how fast it goes. So we got four gigabit going back to the PC. So going to the drive, we only got 50, right at 50, but we got four gigabit going back, which again, I, I just slowed down the speed and it'll be up on the screen. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the new Thunderbolt 5 cable and see how fast this one goes transferring that data. And now we're gonna do that same test one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete it from here. And now we're gonna copy it back over to it. So up on the screen is the USB-C 3.1 versus the Thunderbolt in Crystal Disk Mark. So as you see, we only got 43.38 read and 43.95 write. Now, if you go look at the Thunderbolt 5, we got 991.33 read and 805.85 write. So just about everything quadrupled, if not more than quadrupled, in speed. All right, so that was some real world and some synthetic benchmarks. So 100%, I mean, a cable like this right here that's a capable of transferring 80 gigabits is going to be so much better. I wish I had an iMac or something to do more tests on this. If I wound up getting something that is capable of doing Thunderbolt 4 to the fullest extent on like the video quality and stuff like that, then I, I might come revisit this and do another video. But 100%. Also remember your block right here for charging your phones or your tablets or whatever, you need to have the correct block as well. So if you go get you a 15 watt USB-C block and you plug it in, uh, this one here is USB-A, but if you go get a USB-C one and you plug this in and then you plug it into say like me, I had the S24 Ultra, if I plug it in here, I'm only gonna get 15 watts. I'm gonna get slow charging. In order to get that fast charging, I'm gonna need a block that's capable of doing that fat, that super fast charge for that higher wattage. So you got like 15 watts, you got 25 watts, 45, 65. And of course this cable by Fiddy right here, I mean, very well built, six foot. Again, I need a long cable. So here's a six foot cable. The ends are really, really sturdy. Everything is literally buttoned on. I'm not afraid of this falling apart anytime soon, unless I'm just so rough on this. I mean, Again, I mean, this well-built quality, you can't pull on nothing. You don't feel nothing moving inside the braiding cable that's on here. I mean, it's really, really nice. Very nice. And of course, I do like the fact that it does say 80 watts on one side. It says 8240. So they clearly mark it where if I go pull out, if I go pull out one of my old USB-C cables, I don't even know what cable this is. I don't even know what if it's 3.1, 3.2, 40 uh, gigabits, 140, 100 watt, I don't know nothing about this cable. You know, all I know is I have an extra USB-C cable, and I do like that about uh, Fiddy, is they do mark that on their cable. But yeah, hopefully y'all got some insight out of this video. Please go ahead, if you made it this far, like and subscribe. I bring more, I bring a lot of content like this. I do bring reviews out. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Go ahead and check out this video right here. See if this is worth your money here at the end of 2025.